Hello everyone, so Maria and Gina. Gina, how are you today? Good morning, awesome, awesome. So Reflect and Reset with Maria and Gina. And uh, we. this is our second show, Gina. Very Feeling good. very excited about this show. Um, we got so many people uh, through Facebook, through LinkedIn, asking questions um, and telling us that we should go deeper into uh, our journey, right? A little scary, a little yes. scary, but we're gonna we're gonna attempt it. <laughs> and one of the topics that some of our friends and people that listen to the show was um, uh, asking us to talk about was our experience in the relationships that we've had in our lives, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna get deep into. Um, our experiences, our divorces, and the journey that we've taken, and how we've deal, how we have been dealing in raising our children in a professional mm -hmm. environment. That's right. So, uh, Gina, do you want to start telling us oh, a little boy. bit about you? Well, now it's time for me to bear all, huh? <laughs> so, um, so I was married back in um, oh God, I don't even remember where, when it was, but uh, my daughter's twenty eight years old, and. Um, uh, we divorced, my ex-husband and I divorced when she was two. And uh, so she doesn't really even remember the relationship of her, of mom and dad being together. She only remembers me by myself or daddy remarried at one time, but he's divorced again. Uh, but, you know, with that, you know, Erica went through, my daughter's Erica, of course, and she uh, she went through a lot of, you know, issues with, with a single, because she's with me one time, then she goes with her dad. And after Erica was born, you know, I went right back to work. So it wasn't that I had, you know, today where, where women have their children and they get to stay home for, you know, I don't know how many weeks. It's like 12, 12, 20 12 weeks. weeks. 20, 12, 20. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, so it was a little difficult for me, you know. But... Um, and can I ask you, I know that your daughter adjusting to having your husband pick her up on every other weekend, whatever the arrangement was. Um, how do you think uh, that affected her, right? Well, she, she um, Erica actually suffered, from, um, she had her terrible twos, and then she had her terrible threes, and fours, and fives. And she didn't actually, she had tantrums up until 12. And then after 12, she like turned into this amazing, amazing child. And the truth is, is that Erica didn't want to go. Not that she didn't love him, she just didn't, she didn't want to leave mommy, you know? But, um, but this kid was, when I tell you tantrums, that the joke is that at night, well, we used to call it, the joke is we used to call her the beast, right? And at night, I used to go in and look at her head to see if I could find the three sixes because I could have sworn that she was the devil's child. But then all of a sudden, you know, and, and the truth is, is that I put her in therapy. And, but, the, but really, I was the one that needed the therapy. I didn't know how to deal with Erica, with with being a single mom, with with holding a career, with you know, with her having an understanding that she had to split her life between mommy and daddy, you know, and and it's very very difficult. And so when you think about it, you know, the therapy that she was going through, and and the you know, she used to go into the therapy with older, right, with the hood, the sweatshirt hood over her head, not wanting the therapist to see her face, and then gradually, gradually, the hood came off. Right? The hood comes off. And what I realized is that with that, with her going to therapy, I started going and started working on myself as a single mom to be the best parent I could for her. Right. You know, and, and as you know, being you have three. <clears throat> yes. And you know, you made you make an incredible uh, important point for women to realize that therapy is is something that a lot of people and I know in the Latino community they think you're crazy if you get therapy. Um, but uh, that is not the case. No. I mean, to, to realize that you need help, that you need somebody outside of your circle uh, looking at your life in an objective way and helping you and guiding you how to be better for your child, right. how, to, how to make better choices for your child. And people don't understand that, right? Yeah. They, they, they think, well, what's wrong with my kid? Like me. I'm looking for, like I said, I'm looking for the three sixes in her head. There's something wrong with her. It wasn't her. It was me, right? Right. And I, I have, you know, similar experience. Um, although my experience, I'm sure many of you listeners are not going to be able to to understand or relate to, because I was 17 years old when I got married for the first time, and I look back and I said, my goodness, I look at 17 year old kids now, like. 
what the heck was I doing? You know, a married woman at 17. And it's part of, you know, the culture. We joke around, you know, I was fooling around with my set, my, my 20 year old boyfriend. Um, so I, I, you know, four years older than me and um, a little older than me. And what I, my family decided that I needed to get married, which, you know, looking back and going through that journey, I remember talking to my mother later on and she's like, I don't even know why I, I, I asked you to do that. But I am glad that they did because I ended up having two amazing kids. Awesome. And I got to tell you, the challenges for me as a single mom, uh, because I ended up divorcing uh, 10 years later, and my kids were very young. And here I am, you know, trying to develop a career, trying to be the best mother that I could be. But one thing I realized, like you were saying, I realized how broken I was when I started, when I had my first child. And a few years later, I'm, I'm not able to really deal with motherhood. And I'm saying to myself, I am such a loving human being. Why can I not be more loving to my child? And I started, um, he, was, he was my catalyst to start to get help mm -hmm. and start reflecting on, on my life and my past and how can I reparent myself and how can I redirect um, the, 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 uh, the path that I was in right. and the journey with the children, you know, um, realizing that you are the person that is creating their life. And that's a huge, huge responsibility. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, because you're all alone. I mean, you're doing this by yourself. Yeah. So to be able to get therapy um, and work on you, as understanding that you are the most important person, that you are the nucleus of these children. Yeah. So working on yourself, like you said, is critical, and um, and then making sure that your kids are also finding a way to work on themselves. Right. And like you, my, my kids, uh, especially my, my child, Franco, um, my firstborn, he went to therapy. And the therapist uh, helped us when, we, when I was going through the divorce mm -hmm. because I realized that I have a young child that is not understanding his new life. You know, you're putting them in a place where they had a home and now they have two homes. Right, exactly. And they have a home where you know, I'm, I'm more of the fun type of person and my ex-husband, their father was more of a structural guy that, and they had to make that adjustment every other weekend. Yeah. And I think they become very protective of mom. Yeah. You know, if you notice, it's like my ex-husband, I said, we're married, um, no longer, the kid, he's divorced now, but, um, but Erica got very protective of me to make sure I was okay with it. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> move on because they're having a hard enough time as it is trying to cope so you need to realize that you're the adult and you need to you need to you need to deal with your children and deal with your ex privately Correct. so it has to be private if you guys have an argument then have the argument away from your child because I know and and just my parents were stayed together until they passed you know so it was it was a very different life but yet all my brothers and sisters every one of them were divorced there's six of us in the family. We all got divorced. That's interesting. All of us. And you yeah. know what? Some of us have significant others now. I have somebody that I'm with, Paul. I'm with Paul for 10 years now. Um, and But my other, my brother Louis remarried. Uh, he's married for the third time, but this marriage will be forever. But the other, the other sisters, they... And brothers, they, they, they are not looking to get married again. They're not even looking. My sister, one sister that doesn't even want a man in her life, you know, and she has two great boys. But it's how we're raised, you know. So we were yeah. almost raised as men. My father pretty much made us very strong. In other words, even with you, right, in the relationship, yeah. we're business women, right? So how, how hard is it for you to, you know, start thinking about having a relationship again, especially yeah. when you have children? You know, and, and I'm going to answer that, um, but I want to remind everybody that we are taking live calls. So it's Reflect and Reset with Maria and Gina. And the number is 914-636-0110. So if you have any questions, you know, from us, uh, just give us a call. Um, Gina, uh, we were talking about before the show how important it is that you find mothers uh, or fathers, right? Um, but we're going to concentrate on us right now. Uh, the mothers find time for themselves. Yep. And I was telling you the story that when my kids were young, 
Um, I, and I was a single mom. I was actually a single mom for 17 years. And uh, I ended up getting married again. But unfortunately, as you were saying, you know, I am divorced now. I, I've been divorced for two years and I was married for another 10 years. And I ended up having a daughter at the age of 42. And that in itself uh, has been a beautiful challenge and a lot of adjusting. And going back to how important it is that um, you take care of yourself. So I had this for many years with my kids on Tuesdays. I used to be, um, I used to be out of touch for at least three hours. And what I would do is I would go into the bathtub, I put candles, I had a glass of wine, and I had a book, and I read for a few hours, and then I just sat, reflected, look at you know whatever it is that a show, whatever it is, and that was my time once a week. And we find that a lot of people do not do this. I, you know, I, we were talking to Sarai, our marketing uh, manager, before the show, and she was like, you know, that's an amazing point. It is so true. Be women don't take time for themselves. What do you think of that? I was a slave to my daughter. I, mean, I, did, I didn't take any time. You know, everything was surrounding her because, you know, it, she did have such a difficult time, you know, in her life when she was a kid. And she, I don't know why. I don't care if her socks were on wrong. You know, she had a tantrum. Or yeah. she didn't like something, she had a tantrum. And it was like, I just wanted to appease her. So my escape, pretty much, was work. You know, and, and I say this in all due respect, you know, to my daughter because she is an amazing woman. And she's a she's a most she's turned into the most loving and compassionate you know, young lady. And she's uh, 28 years old, like I said, and she's a nurse at Montefiore Children's Hospital. And she's in the, the ICU. She got promoted up to the ICU. And, and I couldn't be prouder of this kid. You know, and, and I had actually, before the show, I actually texted her and said, in case you're listening, sorry, but I'm going <laughs> to divulge a little bit of some, some information about you. So, uh, you know, listen, you know, but don't be upset with me. Yeah. But uh, but it, it's really true, you know, I didn't have that escape, like even when we, because I know that we wanted to talk about, you know, daily routines and stuff, and, and the way, um, you know, you meditate and stuff, I didn't have any type of escape um, myself, because I didn't know how, I didn't know how, I thought the best thing to do was just be there, you know, be the best I can for her, but but taking by just taking care of her. You know, does it make sense? Of course. So yeah. it's like you know, I didn't know any better. And although I was twenty nine when I had her, um, and the guys don't do the math, um, but I was twenty nine <laughs> when I had her. Um, you know, I still I was still very immature, and I really didn't know how to raise a child. Yeah. You know? Imagine uh, me. I I had a child at the age of I was nineteen when I got pregnant uh, with uh, Franco. I happened to have. Three, um, three children, as we were saying. Um, and Franco is in his 30s, and Jeffrey is in his late 20s, and uh, Natasha is 10. And, um, you know, huge gap. But I've been blessed with the ability to raise these two kids when I was very young, go through the challenges, which were a lot, and, um, and, and realize that, you know, with Natasha now, as, uh, I, I get to appreciate her in a different light because I am not so worried about, you know, am I doing this the right way? And I, I've done so much growth because the, the key thing is that we don't have the right formula. It's not like we're no. telling you, you know, we know the formula. If the formula existed, that would, that would be great. But unfortunately, there's no formula to raising kids. But what we can say is, from our experience, is we have successful children. Yes. And they're socially successful. They are professionally successful. They're not into drugs. They're not drinking. Right. They're, you know, they're, they're good, good kids. Oh, yeah. It's adults. Well, know, to, and... to us, they're going to be kids. Oh, right. It's, um, you know, so with, with um, Natasha now, I feel that I can give her a lot of the tools that I've obtained through the years of, yeah. you know, when I was raising uh, Franco and Jeffrey. And, um, and, it's, and, and I thank them for that, you know, but one of the key things also is to be very open with your children and give them a space where they can feel comfortable coming to you. I, I remember with my kids, I tell people, they would tell me things I didn't even want to know. It's like, oh my God, no, too much information. Too much information. TMI. But 
the way that we react to that information is is critical. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into all the details because they, I think they would kill me if I did. <laughs> but but um, when they're coming to you with information uh, that you want to react in a parental way, realize that if they're coming to you with something so private that they're they're giving you the space to to be there for them, and then when you start being a parent right away, um, that that's going to turn them off, and they'll 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 close the door from coming to you. That's right. And I remember you know reacting and thinking in my mind, oh my God, no, I did not just hear that. And then I would be, the words that would come out would be more of it a friend advising them, mm-hmm. you know, and saying, I am so glad that you came, you know, and you, right. and you talked to me about this. Um, and I just wanted, and I'll give advice, but it was a light advice. It wasn't, right. you know, like it, um, what do you call it? Dictator. There you go. So again, this is Maria and Gina with uh, Reflect and Reset with Gina and Maria. For anyone who, well, Maria and Gina, whichever way you want to say it, uh, for anyone who's just joining us, and again, the lines are open if anyone wants to call in, 914 636 0110. And we also are live on Facebook. Um, if anybody wants to ask any questions on Facebook, uh, we're here to, to answer the questions. Um, so the um, so when one of the th- uh, the other things that we wanted to talk to you about is so how do you deal with the stress of raising kids and having a professional life and what what we've done we're going to give you some of the the uh, tools that we've used uh, in the past is um, I'm very big into a morning routine and if you look at uh, your life and you reflect on how are your mornings. How are you stressing every morning? Are you rushing every morning? Uh, what are you doing with that space in the morning? And you need to reflect. And I've actually did that. Um, and for a long time now, I've created a morning routine. Um, I get up a little earlier. So if you feel that you're not able to work out, because that's one thing that I hear from a lot of people, well, I don't have time. Do you realize that you can work out for 15, 20 minutes or 50, you know, 30 minutes or, you know, and, and you can get an intense workout in that time. And if you need to get up a little earlier, get up a little earlier. The advantages and uh, the benefit of working out, especially in the morning, are tremendous. And I know that, you know, not everybody does that. Gina will tell you about her routine. <laughs> but so I work out and then I meditate. And I've gotten into meditation about eight months ago, and my son, uh, Franco, actually got me into it. A a lot of, uh, it's amazing how much this kid has guided me, you know, through my life. Ironically, this is my child, but he's somebody very motivated and very big into reflecting and resetting. And when he introduced me to meditation, I'm like, I can't do this. This is it's too much, you know, like how do you, when I started meditating, my mind was flying. I, I, I realized for the first time that there are so many thoughts. Your brain is never it resting. Stop. It doesn't it stop. Doesn't stop. Yeah, so, but when I started meditating and I said, okay, you know, I did guided meditation. I used this app called Calm and um, you can download that app and it's Amazing! It guides you through the beginning of meditation, and then you can decide to go more advanced. But when you meditate, you're giving your brain muscle a break. You're giving those cells a break. And it could be a few minutes that you're giving the cells a break. A few seconds. Seconds. And you start training your brain, and little by little, you're able to tune, you know, to zone out in in and out of thoughts because they're never going to go away but to get the, the, the after you after you meditate how you feel so relaxed yeah it is it an actually amazing feeling actually it, you know Mar- maria feels revitalized and i actually want to go to bed <laughs> so there's a very difference between her and i and i actually am using meditation now right so mm-hmm. you know when i really can't calm myself down i'm laying in bed and I'm, you know and I'm, I'm meditating and i'm listening to her and you know okay let your feet sink into the bed and my feet are sinking into the bed and let your back sink into the bed and now relax your shoulders and everything's working and my head's on the pillow and wow I'm about to fall asleep because I don't sleep well 
know, and, and so I'm, I'm doing this deep, deep sleep meditation, and all of a sudden Paul rolls over and starts snoring, <laughs> snoring in my ear, and I'm like, wait a minute, no, this, how do you, how do you make everybody disappear? Because I know at work, and I would say this at work, I can sit on the computer, and I start focusing into my work, and the girls actually tease me because they'll come into the office and start screaming fire because I don't hear anybody when I'm focused on something. But to get that zone in meditation when everything's quiet, it's, um, it's, it's difficult. And then all of a sudden you have yeah. something that reacts or a sound that happens like snoring in your ear and you're like, wait a minute, now I'm going to start over because I totally lost the whole Right. The whole relaxation. But you have it, you know, and that's the beauty of meditation, that you feel that you got disconnected, but then slowly you can get your brain back into a meditation mode. And it is it is learning to control the muscle, right, the brain, mm -hmm. that meditation will, will get you there. But it takes time. No, it's hard. Know? It's hard. And then so I'm looking at the clock saying, okay, I could get up and maybe work out. And I said, nah. <laughs> no, maybe I'll just stay in bed. So we're very different. We are, but very I very mean, different. for about a, a year, I got you into that routine. Yeah, and I don't mind working out. You know, I'd much rather play tennis, but, right. but uh, you know, just sitting in the gym and going on a treadmill or doing a workout, it's not really my thing, but, you know, we all have, we're getting older. Yes. So we have to start taking care of ourselves. And well, but I'm you're a good role model, Mama. You're a good role model. <laughs> so I have lots of little nicknames for Maria. You'll start hearing as the show goes on. We do. <laughs> little, She's little Linda. Pet names, little pet names. And you're Linda. We won't tell you why I'm Linda. <laughs> It's because I focus, I don't listen to her, so she calls me Linda. So Linda, listen. Linda, Linda listen, listen. Um, well, you know, the uh, what I was going to say, going back to your routine, um, I, I go back to working out. It is... Uh, it is yeah. something that, especially women, you know, we're taking care of you mothers out there. You need to, f oh, we have, oh, we have a phone call. Quite excellent. Hello there. Hi, good morning, ladies. Thank you for calling, Stephanie. <laughs> um, I always, I said to Gina, um, I have this thing that I would love to be able to create magic where I can go when my daughter's acting up, I go poof, and she disappears. And then I can call her when I'm ready and when she's ready. <laughs> Unfortunately, obviously, that doesn't happen. Um, I have a lot of respect for women that are have decided to put their career on hold and become a stay-at-home mom. I think that is the hardest job that anyone could have. So I have respect for them. I could not do it myself. I realize that I am a better mother as a professional in giving my kids quality, quality instead of quantity, right? This is a saying that a lot of people say it's important to know. Um, my, my advice to you is um, reflect if you do want to completely stay out of the professional world. If you have been a professional woman, uh, maybe you could do something, even if it's volunteering, where you are taking care of your mind and you are continuing to, um, well, to grow, well. mm -hmm. right? Where you're not sort of dedicating all the time to your children because I got to tell you, I, personally, I don't feel that dedicating all the time and giving yourself to your children is the right way. You need to take care of yourself. You need to figure out a way to focus on you so that you could be the best mother that you could be. Yep. So we're winding down now, guys. Yes. So this was our second episode or second show, and it was very exciting to be here with everybody. Yes. Uh, and Maria, my partner in crime and business. Yes. So we're getting ready for the next show, and we're going to be talking about dating and how difficult it is as professional women. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. That lot show lot is going to be fun. So we'll see you next Friday at 9.30. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.